from London, England, it's The Q. Covering Discover 2016 London. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. Welcome back to the docks of London, everybody. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. We're here at HPE Discover 2016. This is the first day we're wrapping up, Paul Gillen and I. McLeod Glass is here as the Vice President of Product Management at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, focusing on software defined and hyper-converged. Welcome to theCUBE. Yeah, thanks again. a lot. Well, glad to be here. So what's the buzz on the floor? Are people excited? Uh, yeah, we, yeah, we have uh, lots of stuff going on. Uh, we're very excited. We had several key announcements today around our uh, Synergy and OneView platform, uh, uh, introducing uh, Cloud System 10 on Synergy, which is the first private cloud on composable infrastructure. Um, made some announcements around hyper, our new hyper-converged operating environment, uh, adding some key capabilities there, so very excited. <laughs> Talking, uh, we've been talking about composable sort of all day. Can you make this real for us? Uh, with the new Cloud System 10, uh, what can a customer now do that they couldn't do yesterday? Yeah, yeah, so uh, you know, it's, it's basically a uh, capability to deliver private cloud on composable infrastructure. Composable, obviously, uh, is a, um, a key technology uh, that allows uh, you to get more out of your infrastructure. It's, you know, basically uh, is built of uh, fluid resource pools, uh, a programmable, you know, software-defined intelligence, uh, as well as a key capability around software APIs, where we have an ecosystem of partners uh, that we work with to really kind of help you, um, you know, build infrastructure that uh, essentially allows you to, to, to deliver a cloud-like experience on our infrastructure uh, within your data center. So I feel like, um, so HP was kind of early on in talking about converged infrastructure, yeah. And then things kind of slowed down. And then it just, you know, with Synergy and this whole push around Composable, it really picked up. I mean, the early days of DevOps, infrastructure as code, I mean, it was clear those things were becoming real. And, and it's taken HP a while. Your strategy seemed to be not just to sort of follow what the converged infrastructure guys are doing, but try to leapfrog where they're at. Is that a fair assessment? Uh, I would say we were a leader in converged infrastructure, uh, and we're a lead, leader now uh, in the transformation both from hyper-converged as well as into composable infrastructure, uh, which I think is a key piece of really helping our customers simplify uh, delivering uh, IT and, and hybrid IT. Um, you, know, with, you know, I think Rick talked about today, uh, you know, a lot of people uh, you know, know that public cloud has been a significant area of growth, but what you don't realize is private cloud is growing just about the same, at the same rate. Uh, and so you know, our, we really believe, as one of our core you know, parts of our strategy is hybrid IT is where things are at, and uh, that's really where we're focused on really simplifying and delivering that for our customers. And, and what makes Hewlett Packard Enterprise different you know, specifically the product's different. Talk yeah, about that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think one of the things is the fact that, uh, you know, we believe that the infrastructure really still, still matters, right? And that's where, you know, delivering this software-defined capability across our infrastructure uh, to be able to allow our customers to deliver more value to their, you know, lines of businesses and to their customers uh, is really what it's all about. So, you know, being able to, to, to deliver that kind of efficiency and cloud-like experience for them, uh, where they can you know, dynamically deploy and, and match up their infrastructure and the resources within their infrastructure to their workloads and be able to redeploy and redeploy uh, you know, that infrastructure you know, essentially with a line of code is, is really what sets us apart. Now, is this capability confined to HP infrastructure or are, yeah, can, your partners, a, can your partners play as well? Oh absolutely, this is our partner led. We, we, we work with our partners all the time. Our partners are a key part of our value uh, um, that we deliver to our customers, and uh, you know, absolutely, and uh, it's a it's a HPE technology uh, around composability. We're definitely a leader in, in composable infrastructure. Okay, I want to come back to this a little bit, but let me let me set it up. So we were talking about sort of you know debating whether or not where was HP in the whole converged infrastructure play. I was, I always like to joke that sort of we go back to Teradata. That was kind of the first converged infrastructure, yeah. and then I've said even today earlier I said HP and Oracle came up with Exadata. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of the sort of next wave. And then I think HP coined the term uh, converged infrastructure. And then you saw sort of saw VCE come out, and and then this hyperconverged thing hit. And it almost was like the traditional enterprise players were taking a page out of the hyperscalers and saying, "Hey, we can 
we can actually develop a similar capability for our customers on-prem and bring a cloud-like experience to them. So, first of all, that's kind of my setup. And okay. I, want to, I want to dig into what's really different about HPE. You said, because you believe infrastructure matters, but you know, when you look at hyper-converged, I think VMware, maybe they don't care so much about hardware infrastructure. Okay, fair enough, but certainly Dell EMC care about hardware infrastructure. Uh, you know, I, I would say, uh, as well, a company like Nutanix seems to care, even though a lot of the innovation is on software. What do you mean by infrastructure matters and how does HP differentiate from some of those other companies that I mentioned? Yeah, uh, just bringing intelligence into the infrastructure itself to deliver um, the experience that we deliver around composability, right? So, I mean, it's, it's, it's not uh, the software necessarily sitting on top of it, which is all really imp important as mm -hmm. well, but it allows you to, to deliver that physical infrastructure and, and deliver it uh, to match the workloads that customers have in a dynamic way. Uh, an example, I think we were talking a little bit earlier before we were on air, uh, specifically about how a customer can go take that infrastructure and deliver, you know, say a VDI implementation. The way they would do it in the past is you had your, your VDI set up, and then if you were going to do something else, you would have a different uh, setup for that. Uh, using composable infrastructure, you could have VDI during the day, um, and you don't have users that are going to log on at night, you can th then take and, and dynamically reprovision that same infrastructure without having to stand up a new instance of infrastructure to go do something else that's very important for you, like uh, process batch payments or something like that. And I couldn't do that, say, with a, a Nutanix type of system. You, you can't do that because it's not composed. That's the, the beauty of composable infrastructure. In that, so a, in that instance, I'm pinning that system to a workload, is what you're saying, Yes, correct? yeah, absolutely. So is composable an evolution of converged? Is it a uh, superset of converged? Uh, absolutely, yes. Composable is, is, is basically, you know, we you know, think about traditional, think about uh, converged infrastructure, think about hyper-converged, and think about composable as being kind of the, the, the end state in terms of uh, the ideal way to deploy infrastructure in a, in a you know, private hybrid cloud type of environment. So essentially you're virtualizing everything. Yes, I mean, basically. I mean, so, so why, why yeah, but it's beyond virtualization, it's, bond, though, it's right? beyond that. Yeah. It's bare metal, it's containers, it's virtualization. You can do the same management, the same implementation uh, using our OneView uh, technology as well as the Synergy platform to, to do that. And you, you said it before, infrastructure is code. It's, so it's, yep. it's containers, it's microservices, it's an API. Yep. Um, it's, it's mimicking, to a great extent, at least in my mind, the public cloud experience on-prem, on yep. maybe, maybe with the exception, maybe you debate this, but the exception of the pace of the, some of the services, but, but maybe not. I, I've always argued you don't necessarily need all the services on-prem that you get in the, in the public cloud, but maybe eventually you do. Yeah, and we, and we, work, we work with a lot of partners that's, that's part of the ecosystem and having the, the open API that allows us to work with a lot of our partners. I mean, you, you, if you saw the session today, you saw Microsoft talking about their, uh, um, their uh, mm. operations management suite uh, and the integration with the OneView API to deliver that, base, that cloud service, private cloud service, uh, on top of the OneView capabilities to, to, to deliver some of the infrastructure information um, to be able to help them better manage that private cloud environment. So there's lots of, of cool ways that we can take advantage of, of that to so, deliver value to our customers. So I want to, so the, the vendor marketing frequently, and I use it myself, so I get the Kool-Aid injection that sticks in my brain, is mimicking a, a public cloud on-prem. I, I use that term a lot, because that essentially that seems to me like a good north, north star um, in, a, in a good mission. Uh, having said that, there's, a, there's trouble looming in the public cloud, particularly with regard to API, and I'm wondering if you can solve this problem. So, <laughs> I'm more familiar with AWS, because we use it extensively, but if you want to access different data services within AWS, there's probably 10 different APIs. There's one for Kinesis, there's one for Dynamo, DB, there's one for S3, there's one for Elasticash, there's one for Search. They're all different proprietary APIs. Um, and you're getting API creep and, it, and it's bringing complexity, it's hard to understand pricing, it's hard to understand what my bill is going to look like at the end of the month. Can you solve that problem 
Let me start there. And, and is, it, is it a real problem and can you solve it? Well, what I'd say is what we're delivering on exposable infrastructure is a single API that's the same, as I said before, across bare metal, containers, virtualization. Um, it's, a, it's a single open API that allows you to manage all of your infrastructure as code. So it's, you know, there isn't a different, there aren't different APIs that you have to go interface For with. For hot data so or cold data. Or it's the same, same, same uh, API that you'd be delivering that infrastructure. And, with. Then I, and I access different services through your ecosystem. Yes, the ecosystem is where those services come into play. And, we and have a lot of great they have their partners. own API, is yeah. that right? So, yep. sort of, yeah, and they, you've so got we, the Uber API. Yeah, you think about you know, uh, you know, working with partners. We have a lot of partners that are in that ecosystem. You know, Turbonomics, we have uh, um, uh, the Mesosphere, mm -hmm. Docker, mm -hmm. all those guys are all you know, part of that ecosystem. Does Composable Microsoft, eventually VMware. Yep. Does mm -hmm. Composable eventually extend to the public cloud? Is that an option or is that a, a direction? I, there's nothing that prohibits a, a public cloud provider from using composable infrastructure. It's, I mean, it's, you know, it's an efficient way to do that. Uh, you know, and the, the thing about it is it's multi-workload, right? Um, typically what you see in a large, you know, public cloud type of environment is it's a couple of different workloads and you're basically, you know, building out a large, uh, compute farm or storage farm, basically depending on what you, you know uh, service you're delivering, you're putting in a specific type of, of infrastructure to go serve that workload. Um, what composable infrastructure allows you to do is actually serve the whole spectrum of workloads because you control that infrastructure and how you deploy those resources specifically around that workload. But your single API approach is all about openness and choice. Yes. Is that right? Yes. So, because what AWS would say to, to my criticism would be what we want to control the primitives because we have, because things change. But, but I think what you're saying, if I understand it correctly, is well, that's fine. You could still get to the primitive API with each of those individual services. We have a control point that's a single point of entry into our system. Is yeah, that right? It allows you to, to run your infrastructure as code, like I said before. And, and that's <laughs> unique? In the industry, yeah, in your absolutely. view, as, a, as yeah. a product marketing person, a product management person, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what the competition is like, you have to line up against it and build something better. And yeah. so you've done the analysis, I have it, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Composable infrastructure is definitely unique uh, in the industry. It's something that HPE, it's an innovation that we've, we've brought to, to, to market. Uh, you know, and we've extended some of those tenants uh, around Composable into our new hyperconverged uh, solution. So, you know, we've got our new hyperconverged operating environment that delivers uh, multi tenancy workspaces, which is also another unique thing that we offer uh, within that hyperconverged portfolio of products. Uh, that allows uh, you know a line of business IT to deliver a, a essentially a service provider type of offering to their lines of business um, that allows them to compose these workspaces and the, vir the VMs within those workspaces so that they can get up and running very quickly. And this comes all under the rubric of hybrid IT, which was a lot of talk about that today. Yeah, that absolutely. Right? That's our 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 number one goal is to make hybrid IT simple for our customers. So. Okay, let's test that. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, the old line I used to use is you don't, you don't buy hybrid, I used to use hybrid cloud, let's go use hybrid IT. You build it. Yep. Um, and there's still a lot of building going on, right? But yep. it's, you're making it simple to build? Yep, or? we're making it, make it simple, simple to build, simple to operate, uh, you know, simple to, to uh, interface with your lines of businesses, uh, all of those things. Um, come into play. Mimicking so. the whole public cloud model, I mean, essentially. Maybe with the exception of swiping the credit card. Yep. Right. I mean, you can do the. We've heard a lot about the uh, capacity on demand. Yep. So uh, we have, have we offer flexible um, consumption models as well. We have flex, uh, flex capacity, which allows our customers to essentially, you know, we offer uh, the capability to do metering of the infrastructure, and you pay as you go and as you use that that infrastructure. Um, so we offer cloud-like experience even for the on-premise infrastructure that we deliver for private cloud. But it's. And, and I'm not hearing from HPE that you're trying to be the, the, the central point of management for a multi-cloud environment, although that may be part of your strategy. You certainly, you certainly hear that from VMware increasingly. I'm not hearing that messaging from you guys. Yeah, no, uh, we, we were, multi, we're a multi-cloud, multi-vendor uh, multi uh, solution, right? So we're, we're, we work with all of our partners, um, and we're, it's not just one hypervisor, it's not one public cloud provider, it's not one you know, private cloud stack. Uh, we're, we're working across all of them. 
Yeah, but, but one view is the way I manage all that if I so choose. Yeah. The and if I choose view, not to, then... Yeah, you think about the one view API as being kind of that the glue that helps kind of tie all that together working with all these so, ecosystem partners. So where does this help? I mean, let's say HP's competitive edge here. You've got this partner ecosystem, anybody can play. Where do you... Well, I mean, it's in delivering the composable infrastructure uh, and our great network, you know, through our great network of partners to go uh, reach our customers and deliver that value to our customers. Yeah, and your channel. Yeah, so when I, yeah. I say, I, I, you, I, you I, was, I was including the channel. channel in that. So it's not just the, the ISV partners, but it's also our channel partners um, that are a, a key component of delivering that value to our customers. And, uh, you know, they do a great job of it. We enjoy working with them every day. So. So, all right, let's line up the sort of horses on the track. You got the, the traditional converged infrastructure guys, they used to be new and hot, now they're sort of becoming legacy. You got the reference architecture folks, right? You guys play in that field. Yep. You got the hyper-converged, which is sort of replicating public cloud on-prem. You guys play in, in all of those, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and how those markets sort of shake out? The hyper-converged is obviously smaller and and growing, growing huge, yeah, absolutely growing. Right, right. Those uh, other ones are flattening now, or yeah, I mean, so you know, it's uh, it, it, the overall market. You know, obviously, I said before, like the private cloud market is growing mm -hmm. in double digits, much like the public cloud market is. So, I mean, that's where a lot of the growth is happening, right? Uh, which leads you down a path of hybrid, um, you know, uh, hybrid IT. Uh, you know, kind of managing traditional, and a lot of people think of hybrid as is public or private cloud, but it's 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 traditional. It's it it's you know, private cloud and public cloud, all of those things kind of together uh, and really kind of integrating and, and delivering value across all of those. Yeah, and the traditional is going to be more expensive to manage. We know it's going to be more labor cost. It's so, just, it's and, more siloed, right? I mean, yeah. you, you have your infrastructure that's deployed for a specific thing, and when you go do another thing, then you've got, you know, you either um, retire some old infrastructure and deploy it to go do that, or you build a new uh, a new island, essentially, within your, your infrastructure, and, and really, that's what Composable eliminates that problem for our customer. Well, I guess my, my point there is that if you think about public cloud and, and, and Composable or private cloud, what we call at Wikibon true private cloud, in other words, private cloud that truly does mimic public cloud from an operational standpoint, yeah. you're eliminating a lot of the undifferentiated heavy lifting, you're eliminating a lot of labor costs associated with that. We think the number is maybe 200 billion over the next 10 years of labor costs that will get out of infrastructure management, move somewhere else, application, you know, digital transformation, whatever. Are your, first of all, do you buy that? And are your customers comfortable with that notion? Well, what, we, what they're able to do is take the money that they would be spending in certain areas and reinvest it in their business. And, and focus on innovation for their business. Uh, and I think that's a key piece of it, right? That, that there's, you know, this whole idea economy is, you know, it's how fast can you turn an idea into a, a product and a business. Uh, it allows them to focus more on that and less on chasing their, their IT infrastructure. Well, the CXO is comfortable with that. I'm not sure the IT infrastructure guy is comfortable with that. I mean, for years there was a lot of discussion around, well, I think even they would say that, I mean, they're, they're comfortable with it as well because they've got a lot, you know, the, essentially IT is the business now and so there's a lot of, you know, they have a huge queue of, of business behind them uh, that they've got to go take care of and this frees them up to focus on that. They've seen the light. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So. Well, we're shining a light on HPE Discover 2016. Bob, thank you very much yeah, for coming thanks on the a lot. Thanks for Great things. stuff. Yeah. All right, this is a wrap. Uh, this is day one here at HPE Discover. We're in the Docklands of, of London in the UK. Uh, this is theCUBE. We are signing out here. Check out siliconangle.tv. Uh, John Furrier and Stu Miniman, Jeff Frick are going to be firing up uh, AWS reInvent. Check out siliconangle.com. We're going to be summarizing all the interviews we had here today. Check out wikibon.com for all the research. Uh, that's a wrap for today. We'll see you tomorrow. This is theCUBE, we're out.